all grain brewing is a really special thing. I find it really rewarding. You design your own recipes and you can make any style of beer you want. You're not limited at all and you're stepping into the whole brewing process. It sounds pretty straightforward and it's not as hard as you think. I'll take you through this process today and I'll show you how to make your best beer. The first thing I'll do though is explain why all grain brewing is different. You're dealing with hot grain and you're boiling work which can be really sticky and messy if it boils over. So you need to pay attention, you need to wear the proper safety equipment, wear gloves and covered shoes and be careful when you're brewing. Is that while all grain beers aren't more or less likely to get infections, you're investing a lot more time and energy. So you need to really be careful with your cleaning and sanitation and follow a really solid process. The last thing you need is an infection to ruin your beer and you've wasted your time and energy. You're mixing the grains with water to form like a, a porridge mixture. During this time the starch is going to be converted to sugars. Your yeast can ferment these and you can make beer out of it. When you're mashing in you need to make sure that the grains mix completely with the, the water. If there's dry clumps still in it, this is going to mean the starch goes through to your fermenter and it's going to cause problems down the track. You need to make sure that you completely mix the malt in through the water. You want to make sure that it sits at 153 degrees Fahrenheit or 67 degrees Celsius. At this temperature starches will convert to sugars and the liquid that comes out will be fermentable and, and lead to a really good beer. You need to be careful that you don't splash or aerate your mash, your boiling wort or your wort when it's cooling down as well. If you introduce oxygen into it at this stage, your beer is going to start quicker. Always take care when your wort or mash is hot and be gentle when you're stirring it. Also you need to make sure that your grain bed doesn't get too hot. If your wet grain gets over 171 degrees Fahrenheit or 77 degrees Celsius, you're going to extract tannins. This will lead to problems in flavour down the track. You're going to boil your wort and you want to make sure you've got a good rolling boil. This is going to enhance the flavour of the beer. It's going to extract the bitterness, flavour and aroma out of the hops. And it's also going to mean that protein is going to drop out better. So you get a more clearer and stable beer at the end of the day. Once you've boiled your wort, you need to cool it down. So by cooling it down quickly, proteins are going to drop out of it quicker and you'll get a, a cleaner, more stable beer as well. There are processes happening in the hot wort but if you allow them to continue for too long, you're going to get some odd flavours come through your beer. Once you've cooled your wort down, it's in the fermenter, you need to aerate it. So you need to splash it and, uh, and mix it around so you get air to mix through it. This introduces oxygen into the wort. Yeast needs this to reproduce and ferment your beer. If you're working with fresh dried yeast, this is not as much a problem as the uh, manufacturers created the yeast to work in a low oxygen environment. So aerate as much as you can and give your yeast a good start. You want to leave as much hops and protein sludge in the brew pot as you can. Siphon out the wort into your fermenter and just try and leave as much of this sludge behind as you can. If you follow these rules, your beer is going to be awesome. It's going to be the best beer you've made and you're going to be really excited about all grain brewing. So pay attention to your times and temperatures and processes. Make sure you're within these guidelines and your beer is going to be great.